<clears throat> and we're live. Hello, everyone. Hello, Lisa. Hey, Josh. Hey, everyone. Hope everyone is having a good Wednesday and welcome to the Dark Ozarks. Absolutely. It is a it is a <clears throat> it is a good Wednesday to have a Dark Ozarks. Yes, it is. Uh, and especially with a um, spooky topic that we can hopefully pretend it's not 104 degrees out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do our best to tell spooky stories and give you chills and take your mind off of the 106 degrees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, chilling. Uh, of course, tonight's tonight's topic is interesting in its straightforwardness. We're talking about ghosts, mm -hmm. specifically just ghosts. Ghosts is the lead-in topic, not to be confused with all of the other topics that also Ha often have some tie to ghosts. I think that's sure. that's how we typically approach it. We're dealing with a uh, a larger overarching theme or a historic location, um, battlefield, a home, uh, a hotel, etc. That has all this. So we're switching it around. We're kind of going back to the basics and kicking things off with where I think for many of us it starts, which is it starts with Scooby Doo. Um, it starts, it starts with <clears throat> either a, an interest in uh, a fear of ghosts or a combination thereof. That's true, because I think for a lot of people, they, they do like to be scared. And it's, it's no yes. different than, you know, a roller coaster or a haunted, you know, a spook house or something with jump scares. Yes. Uh, and I do think some of those other thrill-seeking activities have sort of formed the opinion for a lot of people that they expect that they're going to be startled and um, and scared with that rush as if, as if it was a spook house. Um, we get that question a lot, too. <laughs> I, I was going to say, with, with many historical uh, events that, that I've assisted in co-hosting it is a common question mm -hmm. are we going to be scared right which again that's a sort of the 64 dollar question i can't answer that for you but it's not what you're not going to be scared because something jumps out at you um, right. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. although i have had people scream before on tours so and it's <clears throat> such an interesting I think intersection between perception and reality. Most of the individuals that, that I've noticed who are frightened uh, are frightened because they've gotten themselves scared. 99% of the time, yes. Um, there, are exceptions. there are exceptions. And one notably comes to mind actually from a public tour of a fella that um, we were walking into a room, a large room, and as he's walking in through an arch doorway, kind of turns and off to the side near some furniture, etc. he sees the apparition of a little girl and wasn't expecting it. And he kind of let out a shriek that he was later embarrassed by. So... <laughs> <laughs> that is that is quite fair uh, quite but it wasn't because she was the apparition was trying to scare him though <laughs> right <clears throat> right and i think that is also as certainly as we've done a lot of this you've done a lot more than i have uh as we as we you know become accustomed to this whole process it it rapidly becomes well it rapidly becomes pretty obvious that in most cases, uh, the paranormal sentience that is in a location may be there for a variety of reasons, specifically mm -hmm. to scare the person who walked in the front door is rarely one of them. Very, very true. Very, very true. Now, the flip side of that, I've had times where we've been on location and Alex, our producer can vouch for this, that uh, we've had people try try to scare us with planted props, et cetera, you know, and mm. 
so they move or whatever and um i'm glad to say that i've never fallen for it so (laughs) knock on wood yes well in all fairness it's uh, there's there's a lot of social um complexities wrapped around that entire thing. I think there's also a lot of social anxiety to varying degrees uh, dealing with all of this. And and in that regard, I brought my ghost hunting hound. Um, And in the, (laughs) there's a lot more interest in Chinese food at the moment than as a ghost, but <clears throat> this boy does not like bok choy. Um, the, he does like chicken. Oh, where was I going with this? I got distracted by my ghost hunting hound. Um, that there, there's mm, social anxiety associated with it in terms of many cases wanting to be afraid, but then if something happens that you do get afraid, sometimes that can be overwhelming so you essentially become frightened over the fact that you got what you asked for that's true and then sometimes people are let down if they don't get that adrenaline rush too so <laughs> it's uh expectations are everything i think mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it's it, you know when i <clears throat> and it, it didn't take a lot to um to wrap my head around this and certainly working with you all was was a big part of it and that is <clears throat> that it we're it's our goal to to step into this space in a respectful way yes that's that this is in the case of many hauntings this is you're essentially the the perhaps it sounds cliche but we're walking into the ghost's home and mm-hmm. in, in many cases it, it, it appears very strongly that they're still thinking of this space as their home. Yeah. And perhaps to some degree, they're, <clears throat> they're interacting with the space as though it is their home. It, like, like nothing's changed. That, that does seem to be the case in a lot of situations and, and not just in a home setting, uh, often in any kind of setting, if they, if the if the spirit had a strong sort of ownership interest and not just purely in, in that legal sense but uh presence there uh that they were they were invested emotionally in a place they take yeah. that role it could have been some place they worked or uh, some some other place they owned uh not just their house and so um Often they seem to be watching over the place and being a caretaker. Yes, and that is, you know, once you once you start wrapping your head around around that reality, the perhaps normalcy of the paranormal, although that can seem very seem like an oxymoron, mm-hmm. the the normalcy of that, to me anyway, starts coming into focus. It does. It does me too. And I, I've, it's it's just what's always made sense to me. Once once you experience a few of these uh, situations, it's the only thing that really makes sense to me. <clears throat> and it, it certainly for me it 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 really resonates on almost a an elemental level. The <laughs> uh, uh, He's getting very tired. Um, I may have to tend to him in a positive way. Pardon me. Please continue. Well, uh, for those listening, that I, I, it is it is a situation where uh, spirit very much seems to be going about their own business and <clears throat> really the business of quote life. Um, Yes. In a way that I think that mundaneness and routineness, I think, really kind of shocks a lot of people. 
I, I think so too. I think that there's <clears throat> such a <laughs> such a, a <laughs> there's so much hype associated with the afterlife. <laughs> the, <laughs> yes. the idea that, that, that for some uh, that it that it may very closely resemble, as you mentioned, the uh, a cut you know customary routines. Mm -hmm. and and patterns <clears throat> that that perhaps were were particularly um satisfying or emotionally connective and that those that those repeat over over and over in, in a way that seems uh, uniquely uh separate from our concept of time but not entirely separate from our concept of space because it seems to inhabit the locations that were important to the people when they were alive. Very fair. Um, yeah, time doesn't seem to, to play much of a role per se. Um, although there are certain situations that something seems to happen uh, at a particular time of day or on an anniversary yes. of this or that. Um, <clears throat> And I'm not really sure, and I'm going to be candid. I don't, I, I don't have a real good theory for why that happens. Uh, I think yeah. we tend to just instinctively think, oh, the accident happened at 10 o'clock. So, you, you know, it's going to be seen at 10 o'clock. And that may be the case, but it's certainly not a universal by any means. Right. <clears throat> and in that, in that regard, you know, I, I think I think something that's interesting to observe. Well, before we go any further, I'm going to put a pin in in the celestial calendar, um, and uh, we have uh, some events that we better invite folks to, and then also a big shout out to our sponsor. Very very good. Um, yes. Um, first of all, to our sponsor, Always Buying Books. Uh, we really appreciate them. They sponsored the video cast. And they are just a great bookstore. And I'm not, you know, I'm not just saying that. They really are. Um, wonderful selection from reading, just reading genre material to high-end collectibles and everything in between. Uh, you can find them uh, in Joplin, Missouri on North Main Street. You can find them on Facebook uh, under Always Buying Books uh, or their website, alwaysbuyingbooks.com. And you can call them <laughs> and they will mail you books. So um, lots of ways to get a hold of them and uh, see if they have what, you, what you're wanting. Follow them on Facebook because often inventory is listed down there and, and put up for sale. So, uh, and sometimes it goes really quick. So sometimes that's often, your, yeah. <laughs> oftentimes it does. I just the, the, the hunt for, uh, books, particularly in particular topics, I think is an enormous amount of fun. And <clears throat> something that, that has just consistently impressed me is uh, Bob and Elise's curation. They, I, 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 put, I put Bob's curation up against the Amazon algorithm any day. Oh, definitely. I, 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 I do too. And of course, he's, he's got a lot of experience doing it, and that's a lot of it. Um, and for um, for the people who've been following the post, we are giving away Always Buying Books t-shirts. Yes. So you've already been told uh, uh, in the last post about it, something that you needed to do. And <laughs> now the second part is you need to drop into the comments on this video and tell us your favorite book. Nice. To be heard. So... <laughs> And if you if you if you weren't reading the post, you have to you you have to like both Always Buying Books and Dark Ozarks, and now drop in and tell us your favorite book, and Very that cool. will bring you into the giveaway. Fantastic! Excited about that. Excited mm -hmm. to uh, to help facilitate that process. Those kind of things are always so much fun. And again, uh, just a, a fantastic selection. It really is. It really is. And a wealth of knowledge, too. Yes. Um, also, we have, I, I, as, I was, as I was driving back from Forsyth uh, this afternoon, I just realized that uh, there is uh, another 
Dark Ozarks event on the on the immediate horizon where folks can can connect with us. Uh, and that is uh, State of the Ozarks Fest on September 17th in downtown Hollister. That's right. Um, that's <laughs> rapidly approaching. And sure. you can come out and we'll both be there. <laughs> it's probably pretty busy, but we will be there and track us down. So, absolutely. Uh, and who knows? We may come up with a, a, some, special, some special giveaway for <laughs> that, too, if you come see us at the festival. That would be fun. Yeah, we can we can do something <clears throat> particularly uh, engaging in that regard. And a great location will be in the shadow, the, the beautiful shadow of the Old English Inn, which is uh, a very haunted location in the Ozarks. It is, and um, that leads into the first Friday in October. We yes. will be having an event mm -hmm. downtown Hollister. Yes, and in uh, Art Walk. Yeah, in conjunction with Art Walk, uh, certainly we'll be talking about the uh, paranormal and the uh, and the history uh, of Taney County and Hollister in particular, as well as a walking tour. So it's going to be going to be fun. Uh, and then so two two great Hollister events, and then uh, uh, several events up in your neck of the woods. Yes, October 15th, we will be at the VFW uh, post uh, 534 in Joplin, Missouri for an all-day event, uh, Dark Ozarks, October Country. We will be covering a number of subjects. It's an interactive symposium. You get involved. We're not talking heads, just talking at you. Um, these events are always fun when we do them. Um, they, so they you really can find are. tickets online you know, on the page, the events up, go, go check it out. Then on October 20th, we're doing a walking tour downtown job, one with all the, the history and ghost stories in conjunction with third Thursday down in Joplin. Yes. Uh, again, tickets are going to be available. Uh, you can find details on the page under events. And then October 29th, we will be at the Ritchie Mansion uh, in the Civil War Cemetery in Newtonia. Yes, just just before Halloween. Just before Halloween, <laughs> and the, the uh, I think the day, just the day after the battle. Wow! After the battle, so so that is a fantastic segue into a theory that <laughs> I was I was just purely speculating on. <clears throat> this is. Again, I have no idea what I, where I'm actually going with this, so there's my disclaimer. <laughs> but the concept, I find this very interesting. The concept, when, when we're observing a paranormal ghost specifically, it, it appears the idea of the passage of time does not seem to be particularly relevant. No. But the moments, <clears throat> essentially, within the celestial cycle, uh, do seem to be relevant. The idea that, that, that something does seem to be associated with a, a clock of sorts that is, that we can recognize, but it is a very different, uh, it doesn't, it seems to be rotating. It doesn't seem to be moving forward in a linear pattern, linear way. Right. Um, and, and that, that may just give a little credence to the, to the theories that some of this is related more to quantum physics than, um, Einsteinian, uh, relativity, um, you know, uh, in quantum physics, all, all points in time coexist. So, something sort of, as you said, rotating around a particular point or time yes. makes more sense in that conversation than our linear experience of time. Um, and it also just kind of reinforces the fact that uh, so many experiences do not seem to be correlated to linear time uh, period. No. That it, it seems to be irrelevant. That part of it seems to be irrelevant. <laughs> yes, I, I think... <clears throat> 
some of the imagery that seems to be coming to mind in terms of an analysis is, is the idea of a, mm, a connection to a celestial, particularly a solar and lunar rotation, mm -hmm. but not of the forward passage of time. That's true. Uh, I, I will throw one monkey wrench into that, um, yes. which it's not so much, uh, not necessarily contradictory, but um, because the space between times doesn't seem to be linear, but in locations that we have investigated over a long course of time, particularly over years, Mm -hmm. kind of find that activity that you experience kind of rotates through time. So if you're in a, say, a Civil War location, it's not uncommon to you experience something that seems to be related to the war. And then over a period of months or even years, the activity that's experienced seems to come from later in time, you know, mm. the late 1800s or the 1900s. And then over time, you seem to come back around and then you get more stuff from the Civil War. Um, That's so interesting. So if you were, I've particularly noticed that at um, like the Kendrick House and places like that. Yes. So that if you just investigated once or even multiple times over a short period of time, you would get roughly the same types of EVPs and experiences. But yes. by being there over years, it seems like th that it goes kind of in a long loop. Yes. That does because seem to kind of parallel <laughs> um, uh, linear time, but the space between it, it isn't proportional to the calendar in any way. That to me is fascinating. And I, I had not thought about that. A, mm, my, uh, my actual reference to the celestial calendar, specifically solar, is actually comes from the, uh, the Carthage Opera House. Right. With uh, uh, the sound of someone falling down the stairs, mm -hmm. uh, which remains at the same time uh, according to standard time, not daylight savings time. Right, so that when, when you have daylight savings time, it shifts an hour. Um, yes, and that's true, and that's heard virtually every day. Not yeah. every day, but virtually every day, um, about three mm -hmm. o'clock solar time. Um, yeah. And and why that why that is so impressed right there, I don't know, but um, maybe it's its own little tiny loop, I don't know, but um, so there does seem to be some sort of tethering to mm -hmm. linear time, but not in the way that we experience it, and certainly not the sense of past and future. Yes. Uh, so and that in itself may just be part of the explanation of why do we have activity? Because if, if it was tethered in past, present, future, you wouldn't have activity from true. the past, you know, and That's certainly not repeated the same right. thing. By, by its innate nature, it, we accept the fact that it is not functioning by the same time rules that we are. Right, and now sort of the, default position is well that's happening because they're stuck they're they, you know they they've lingered and so you're getting what happened in 1893 over and over because they're lingering um yeah. by that analysis they aren't experiencing a loop at all mm -hmm. right so um un unless the two experiences are, are completely detached from one another that doesn't make sense to me either that's true no i think <clears throat> i think it's it's important for us to to discuss certain certain things here first are 
you know, working definition of what is, what is a ghost? Okay. What, what, what is your working definition? <clears throat> well, I have two. Um, <laughs> Or, or more specifically, that it, in terms of paranormal activity that is associated with ghosts, mm -hmm. that there's, you know, for for me, that there's two working, um, uh, working explanations, and one is is the most recognizable. Um, the disembodied energy, mm -hmm. um, disembodied person, uh, the soul, mm -hmm. the 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 essence, uh, the energetic essence, uh, and intelligence of what makes us us without, you know, the, the body. Uh, that for whatever reason is is still around within a space. <laughs> And I'm hoping he falls asleep. Um, he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a rowdy boy. Um, and and that, that, that is the one that, that, that freaks people out. Uh, and I think also is a, is a structure, the structure in which, uh, uh, is a structure that that uh, on one hand makes sense to people, but is also frightening or unsettling, for for a variety of reasons. Um, yeah. One that you know, having someone living in your house with you that you can't see is you know by 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 innate nature can be a bit unsettling, and in in concept, particularly in a, a Sort of a post nineteen fifties. Um, what I'm going to get myself into trouble here. Uh, what gets classified? What I classify as a, a secular modern Christianity. There's very little room for ghost or spirit, and that, that there is a lot of pushback. Um, we that there's just there is a a, a whole lot of pushback. In, in this entire process, particularly from, uh, you know, individuals who come from, again, what I would classify as a, oh, post 1950s, um, very, actually very um, uh, urban influenced um, Christianity. Mm -hmm. That- I think that's accurate. The, the thing that, that is particularly fascinating to me is that when, when you start dealing with, um, you know, for, so we'll just take the, the Scots-Irish um, mountain people who certainly had no shortage of uh, evangelical Protestantism running through their veins. That's most no. of the reason that they were ending up in North America, that these were, these are individuals who um did not really struggle with the idea for example of 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 ghosts of spirits of witches of essentially elemental processes that uh oftentimes are are actually quite observable and that there there wasn't this uh sort of postmodern existential crisis that that seems to arise uh, in almost a commonplace level, and uh, so that's that's that would be my definition of the first part. The second part is something we've already referenced, which seems to be after an enormous amount of psychic and physical energy being released by an. Is it a, I'm going to put him in his room. Um, but that there's a, 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 I'll finish with this and then hand it off to you for just a moment, that there is this um, uh, echo or resonance that is created that is, appears in many cases observable, particularly in battlefield locations, but does not appear to be 
sentient. Right, right. Um, and I, I think people are more comfortable with that concept. Um, yes. That residual, it's called the stone tape theory, that um, basically an event uh, or emotions, even your voice can be imprinted in the environment, in the stone, so to speak, uh, to be replayed like a record um, for a recording. And I think while that creeps people out, they're mm -hmm. much more comfortable with that days because they say, oh, it's not, it, it's not intelligent. It's not a matter of free will. Um, I don't have to think about whether or not there's a choice involved in why are they here or not. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that, I think that question is what creates so much fear is that if there is an intelligent um, presence that right. Are they stuck? Are you know why haven't they moved on? And, and myself in trouble here. I just absolutely hate the whole moved on um, notion. Um, it's become a cliche shorthand for um, they didn't do what they're supposed to do because in our concept you move on to another existence. Um, and then, but I think the unspoken part of that is. And then it's out of sight, out of mind, and I don't have to think about it, and it doesn't affect me. So yes. I feel like safer when when uh, spirits are in their little box on the other side, no matter what bow we put on it and what we call it. Um, yeah, so and just, just go into the light and stop messing with my calm. Yes, yes, and and I don't think we can blame the poltergeist movie for that but it certainly it, it certainly sort of spurred that on um i think almost unconsciously in pop culture mm -hmm. that idea of move on go to the light and um of course ironically most studies indicate uh that even with near-death experiences while some people see lights most don't um and it's certainly not a universal yeah um but it's a nice bedtime story that then you don't have to worry about right right and that makes the one of the realities that you cannot escape is the psychological social um issues that we as corporeal mortals deal with as we're interacting with um, incidences that we perceive as paranormal. Yes. Um, and I think that's one thing over time that I've seen is as far as more people probably being startled than by, than anything ever sort of, you know, the jump scare, that kind of startle. Uh, adrenaline based is that startle reaction when they realize that it, those little boxes about moving on and this, this is the order of the universe that I believe in, but things aren't adding up to that. That it, those are the looks of probably the true fear that I've ever seen of this does not compute and I don't want to accept it. I agree. It's, <clears throat> it's a, it's, it is a sobering moment mm -hmm. um, for, for many. Yeah. There's, there, there's, uh, for, for me, the, the larger mm, concept of other world uh, interactive energy, um, et cetera, that is out there actually is quite comforting. That's actually, to me, is, is it, it feels more natural, more normal to, to step into that form of thinking, uh, which I, I, to me is a, is a much more um, 
three-dimensional and less gray mm -hmm. form of of perspective i think that there's there's enchantment and magic in that in that perspective that to me is very comforting in many ways um but not everybody sees it that natural. way and it just feels natural to me yes yes and i, and I think that certainly certainly some um, family lines take take to that perspective more easily than others but we 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 really it's something that that I just um, that I just keep coming back to is that certainly we 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 throw around uh, the words of of uh, spiritual belief and faith and and uh, um, religion around a lot. Oftentimes, get very opinionated about it. But the, the truth is we we even the, the the many of the structures that we associate with that are, are essentially postmodern um, secular structures or they function as secular structures mm -hmm. that the you know the, what I would classify as the three-dimensional or maybe four-dimensional magic of of the unknown is is relegated to the definition of primitivism. And I think that it's anything but primitive. I, I agree. I agree. And uh, that modern secular version of religion has um, really simplified a, a lot of things to the point that things become almost caricature in a way. And spirit and ghosts are one to the point that it's very common for people who who follow a modern religion really think that there there is no mention of uh ghosts or spirits in religious texts text. and that's simply yes. not true <laughs> it is not true uh it's very much not true and you know that that's Oh, again, I think it's it it is a uh, what's wrong? It's uh, uh, a, a an interesting read, and to me that certainly in the first half of the twentieth century, and even some of the the latter nineteenth century, there's such a strong push for industrialization, such a strong push for for essentially um, what what got called uh, you know scientific secularism. And that, that many, um, something that, that to me anyway appears to be a, a strong push is that uh, faith traditions in an effort to stay relevant were, were actually quite willing to go down that road and, and, and align themselves with what, you know, pre-quantum physics was observable science. Yes. And, and and that's very true. I mean, and that's sort of an unspoken assumption uh, for a lot of people in in that in that group, uh, and maybe an unconscious one at this point. Yes, and, and I think you know it's multi generational now, so yeah. it is that, largely uh, there. There are, there are a lot of unconscious assumptions. There, there really are, and um, it, it strikes me, but it would, but that makes sense because if if you look at Western organized religion over time, mm -hmm. there has been a thousands long, thousands years long tradition of incorporating beliefs or symbolism. And again, this someone's going to get upset out of convenience to yeah. um, basically piggyback on existing culture, existing beliefs, um, basically usurping indigenous holidays and, and practices and symbolism 
Um, and so when that, when societies have fundamentally changed again, basically the same thing happened. Yes. So it's not really too surprising, but for, for those that are, that are in the midst of it, most <laughs> don't recognize it. Right. And then, and then, and then existential crises occur when there's a ghost in your house. Yes. And, um, <laughs> And I'll be the first one to say, I love Peter Blatty's The Exorcist and I, I love the movie. But as far as the effect it has had on the psyche of people, um, it, it's, it states to the really the genius of his work, but um, it has created some, <laughs> some issues. <laughs> yes. As well. Um, and that's sort of that default uh, knee-jerk reaction of it must be bad, it must be evil, it must, it must be. Um, right. <laughs> that really was not there in glaring terms until the exorcist. No, I, I think the 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 study of of demonology uh, prior to the exorcist was was largely esoteric. Yes. Uh, that it was <clears throat> certainly confined. I mean, demonology has been a real thing for forever. Yes. Uh, but but typically- pre, pre Western religion. Yes. Um, but, but typically, as a general rule, confined away from the, the masses, uh, away from just, uh, certainly away from popular culture to a large degree. And yeah, and the exorcist changed all of that. It introduced demonology into, you directly injected it into mainstream culture. Yes. And, and it's really interesting how quickly it really changed things and adhered yeah. itself to um, become, quote, normal. It did. Uh, and, and I think the the issue that that then takes place is that paranormal occurrences are, comparatively speaking, very common. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the, with the introduction, uh, essentially the the pop culture injection of demonology, then the knee jerk response is, if it's paranormal, it's a demon. Right. And, and of course, you know, media capitalized on that because it's makes it a compelling story and it sells movie tickets, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. um, and so that just continued as long as the audience buys into it, they're going to continue. I mean, they, they are, and it, it, it really becomes its own, you know, is the, is the, is the dog wagging the tail is the tail wagging the dog. Mm -hmm. uh dynamic fortunately mine seems to be asleep now he passed out um yeah y'all y'all got to witness the the baby sky that i see when nobody's around as opposed to the incredibly well-behaved sky out in public which is you know if i was gonna have it one way or the other this is better yes. uh, but he was also really wound up and was on his last 15 minutes before before touchdown yeah. um, or splashdown but um you know we and uh, i'll quote you know reference a tv show that certainly i i unabashedly love which is supernatural and but then also uh the, the pop culture mm, era that we seem to find ourselves in of reality tv ghost hunting shows yeah that there's there are so many demons from which to choose and and it it's a it's a it's a cornucopia of demonology you like it just change the channel or you know go stream something else and you'll find one you like 
it's a demon for every week um, and every day of the week. But mm-hmm. then, then it obviously becomes a question. Even the reality TV shows, so it's sometimes, especially the reality TV shows, the, these are shows that are drama. They are meant to get our attention. Um, and certainly the, the idea, and I think um, a lot of our presentations, a lot of what if we do is, is introducing a successful counter narrative that mm-hmm. you don't need a demon of the week to have people be interested in this subject. So if you're watching this and you haven't changed the channel, thank you. Uh, but it's that there is an enormous amount of interest. And in many cases, what I, what I found is most of the people that I'm talking to when, when I'm able to affirm to them that no, in all likelihood, what you're dealing with is, is not frightening. Right. Um, it's not dangerous. This is actually very normal types of occurrences and that there's very common sense ways of interacting with this energy. They really begin to breathe a sigh of relief because in many cases, it's the first voice of reason or calm that they've heard on the subject. Yes, and I've, I've had that experience a number of times over the years. I, I, I really have. Um, and I, I do have good illustration of showing how, now, because people, it, it amazes me, people, really i mean of course for for a lot of people who have never really have never investigated or maybe lived in a haunted house the reality shows are the closest sort of inside look that Mm -hmm. they can because you know it's peeling back the 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 curtain to say we're in this house we're in this building um where in, in a more intimate way than say movies do um, and so for people who have not experienced it themselves it's very easy to say oh this is it um but the next step is the suspension of belief and accepting everything that is said as the be all end all truth and that can be dangerous and the um and not to poke fun but because this this has this was not per se i think uh on the investigators or the cast members uh but when ghost hunters came to carthage and investigated the opera house um actually in the episode you see what can happen in the editing room Mm. um because early in the episode they discuss um the old woman that is seen in the building and that some that she has been seen at times you know formed down to about the knees without the lower legs or feet being visible and one of the and I'm being charitable because I think it was a, it's an overstatement in itself, but one of the cast members, I think it was Dave Tango, says, well, that could mean it's inhuman. If they're not fully formed, that can mean that. And I'm like, no, that just means it wasn't fully formed. Um, it, you know, that in itself doesn't mean anything, but okay, whatever. So that's left in, oh, you have to be careful because this is evil. You know, this is, it could be, this is inhuman. Then the wrap up at the end is, oh, there's nothing here to be worried about. But we don't explain why we aren't worried about the old woman now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, and I'm, I'm not trying to cast stones too much, but it's, it's a good example that, um, a lot happens in the editing process that even you know the cast members don't have control over so right you right. know you, you have to look at these things through that lens of does this make yeah. sense or not right and and certainly i i think that the the audience is I, I would say perhaps composed of, of approximately three demographics. 
the the largest being individuals who just kick back in their and their recliner and are wanting a bit of entertainment mm -hmm. um the 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 second demographic that i would see would be individuals who are in in some way shape or form have, have found themselves sensitive and have have had what they perceive to be experiences or have had experiences over over the years and are interested because this is you know potentially speaking into a, a perspective that they may share right uh, but you know and oftentimes in that is in, I, I want to to dig into that demographic concept a little bit as well I think we all share some of that if we've had experiences but then the the third uh, category of individuals uh, are, are are folks who have had what is at least for them very unsettling or negative experiences yeah. and and this is their attempt to find perhaps resolve perhaps closure uh and, and it's not entertainment for them this is something that they are experiencing or have lived through and it's very pro it's it's a it's an emotional and psychological weight for them it is and for some it's almost watching the shows becomes research yes um, which, for their own situation which in, in a broad sense maybe a little bit they can be just very very broadly but sometimes people will read way too much into this or that on a show and extrapolate it to their experience and it's not always a good outcome no and i think the important thing because certainly within many of the um of the mainstream available products to you know for for public consumption that you can you can debate the the merits of of any of them you can debate the merits of what we do but you have to understand that within the the specific structure of the show it's one of the things i think is very positive about our long format video cast we get to have a a conversation that we're not concerned about getting people through a commercial break that's true i mean that we're, that is true we're just having a conversation we both have day jobs um that are that are unrelated to this to mm -hmm. such a large degree and and we're you know very we're quite successful in our own rights in our in those fields of uh, um as in field of law field of journalism etc mm -hmm. the we don't we don't think about this we are much like our our exposure to uh, modern religion, our exposure to modern media has inured us to the idea that we are being managed um, in, in order to achieve a specific end. In the case of a TV show, it is to get you, the viewer, or us, the viewer, to sit through the 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 you know the diet pop commercial, yeah, the diet that, soda commercial, true. the uh, the new car commercial, the the new uh, you know potato chip commercial that is its purpose and there's a wide variety of emotional cues that can achieve that uh, but demon of the week which will be resolved mostly it after these commercial breaks is a really good one and mm -hmm. if you understand that that's fine the, the it's it's its own art form it's its own structure it's it is it, it's popular media there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's nothing you, inherently wrong with it. No. No, it is what it is. Uh, but if you are attempting to use it for research because you yourself are experiencing something very problematic uh, that is very personally unsettling to you or your children, et cetera, it's a difficult place to mine research from. It is because, you know, in, in that situation, you really do need to be talking to someone who has hopefully quite a bit of experience investigating and researching those kind of situations and I'll, I'll be the first to say most and i'm not going to say all because not it doesn't apply to all but 
most of the cast members for the popular um, shows mm-hmm. are very experienced investigators in, mm. in the thing. And a lot of them have been doing it, you know, 20 years plus, um, just like I have. But, yeah. and here's the thing, is that if you sat down with them, mm-hmm. one, with your situation, the information you're going to get is going to be different than what you are taking out of that 23 minutes of airtime. Um mm-hmm because you're not because you know when you're watching that show you're not really getting their depth of experience perceptions etc uh and it's not tailored to your situation um Mm -hmm. it's 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 like trying to um my day job as an attorney it's it's like trying to get a answer to a complex legal problem off the internet you know you may or may not get something relevant, but you know, you're much better off sitting down with a professional with years of experience who can talk to you about your specific situation. Yes. And that's mm, you know, and, and I think it's one of the nice things. It's it's important to make those points of comparison in things that into fields that are it's more readily available in, in terms right. of understanding. Um because I think in many cases, people do get scared and then they really don't know what else to do. Mm-hmm. That's true. You know, and so I will, you know, I'll be the first to say that, you know, there, there are cast members of a lot of these shows that I have a lot of like, deep respect for um, mm-hmm. and friendship with um, over many years. Um, but it's, but it's, if it makes sense, it's not because of the shows, it's because of everything else they've done in the field that makes it relevant which hopefully they're able to give some good perspective in the course of filming the shows because of that but i think too many people think the show itself is the experience and in the wisdom and that's not the case right because the the format of the the format of the art form really doesn't allow for it that's right that's right so um it's one of those that yeah don't don't shoot the messenger here but you know you you have to separate those two things and i think this is another interesting aspect certainly it's very easy to jump behind the disclaimer of it's just entertainment um and it can be and the show the shows are entertaining and many aspects of this field are entertaining they're in, interesting mm-hmm. they're they're fun and sometimes they're creepy which is part of the allure um but the fact that the shows or show will take you know a hypothetical show is entertainment can really create the impression that the the field of paranormal research is just entertainment that it's just right. fiction. and that's not the case no no um and and that that you know to be honest that's caused a lot of ruffled feathers with a lot of people in the field because they feel like it that they've been you know trivialized it's uh it is a you know a field that fights for its credibility anyway in mainstream mm-hmm. America. And so be the the thought of being trivialized for entertainment just as, you know, adds salt to that wound, so to speak. <laughs> and I think the analogy that comes to mind for me is that cooking shows are just entertainment that doesn't invalidate cooking. Exactly. I mean that that's very true. Or even, even uh, say sitcoms, sitcoms can address very serious issues and bring awareness to something, uh, but there's still a, sit, a funny sitcom, mm-hmm. you know, um, but you, you know, you just can't take it as gospel, so to speak. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's, I think, learning, learning to read the information 
<clears throat> with mm, the cynicism of understanding what the art form must do mm -hmm. in order to be commercially viable, but also with an appreciation for what many people are doing. Mm -hmm. And then of course the, the, the dichotomous question, is this trivializing a lot of people's serious efforts or is it increasing awareness that that, that actually helps? And I, and I think the answer is both yes to both yeah. in, some, yeah. in some respects, you know, it, it's- yes. There, there's been there's been good and bad from it um and the the focus with the entertainment has made the subject more easily discussed and a bit of the stigma there's still a lot of stigma but it's more easily discussed now than it used to be um mm -hmm. you know um used to be you know people they found out that you investigated and uh, were interested. It was almost like, you know, looking both ways and, you know, like they're about to do a drug deal, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> for the police or something, you know, and talking to you because they're so afraid to actually talk about it and afraid of who's going to watch and see and that kind of thing. Um, and so that's helped there. But then on the other hand, uh, it's created other issues and, and, and part of it has been this very con consumer based uh, side effect where people have started, you know, so many people have decided it, it's sort of like, you know, oh, I watched that surgery on, on TV. I can perform surgery on myself. Um, yeah. <clears throat> not being as serious as that kind of statement that, Oh, I'll buy some equipment. I'll, I'll just start doing this. Oh, I can do that. You know, uh, mm -hmm. as if what they see on TV is the entire uh, set of things to think about and, and do. Um, and in the process, it's created a market for uh, gadgets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, far beyond just investigators. Um, uh and so you 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 have a lot of people buying um equipment and software and some of it's good some of it's not and um for for a society that is built on observable phenomena and empirical information there there's a a large subset that has just sort of abdicated that part of their reasoning for the shiny bobble effect well that, and i think yeah i think that that something that comes into that is our almost <clears throat> um unconscious ability to place trust in technology. Well, that's true, but they're placing trust in, in sort of the salesman, you know, um, the, um, and it's more snake oil salesmanship in some respects, you know. Oh, I saw this on TV, so it must be worth something, is sort mm -hmm. of the logic that goes, that this must be it. and. Um, and, and there, there are some of the, the, the equipment that's used that does have some valid purposes, um, or at least relevant, um, in a larger context, but some of them, it, it is pretty incredulous to me that so many people are willing to spend hundreds of dollars on, on certain things that if you step back and just look at it, it makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> Right. So <clears throat> going down, going down this rabbit hole, and then I want to talk about angry ghosts. Uh, 
I, I'm I'm quite confident that when I become a ghost, I'll be an angry ghost at this part of the time. So I need to prepare myself. Some, some of these things are, are are things that probably do make ghosts angry. So yeah. <laughs> might not be a bad segue. <laughs> Certain high frequencies might be one of them. That could be. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, I think you're discussing something that we were test subjects on. Yes, we were. We were definitely exposed to a test subject. Um, that. That. Uh, <clears throat> Well, um, that, okay, so here's my, here's my, before we get to the angry ghost, uh, of which I will probably be one, um, <clears throat> that I feel that something that is driving uh, a certain demographic uh, of, of mm, paranormal enthusiasts or paranormal enthusiasm is a, a, a desire essentially uh, of what really classifies as a very, a very Gnostic desire for special information that is, the idea has somehow been hidden from us that uh, you know, authority, authority is not going to be talking about, but whether it's through this special deal that I got in terms of you know, only five easy payments at $39.95 plus shipping and handling shipped to me, I, I'm now special because I have this that gives me insight or the idea in, in something that is, is actually more relevant in specific situations with the idea that, that certain family lines can can see things that uh, that or or experience things that that other folks don't some people find that very unsettling and some people also perhaps get a little bit of it or they observe other people or they for example watch it on TV Mm -hmm. And then they want that specialness for themselves. That's, I mean, that's true. That, that is true. Um, I, I think both, both of those aspects are, are going on. Um, and the, <laughs> the shows tend to highlight that because they view that that's in their face. Um, and say shows that have mediums, um, um, that would highlight that some people have this sort of secret knowledge, which people that just means the occult. Um, um, and there's no special bad meaning to the word occult. Um, <laughs> um, which again is one of those fear-based things that has developed in the last 50 years, um, sort of in a weird way. Um, but yeah, I think you hit it on the head of just, of of just buying into this, you know, technology gives us our answers <clears throat> to the point of not questioning the technology or the yes. application. I mean, um, a car is a perfectly great machine, but, you know, driving it off into the lake isn't going to get you anywhere. I mean, and that <laughs> part of the problem is often it's things that there's nothing wrong with the technology that they're using, but the application doesn't make any sense. Right. I want to, I want to dig into that. Something I want to inject really quickly to me, of course, I grew up in the eighties and <clears throat> this was, this was for me, two major advents, uh, microwave mm -hmm. and, and VCR. And yeah, the Same. first the first of each yeah. uh, was incredibly exciting it was a big deal it, it was, was. I, I i honestly remember my my mom my sister and i watching carrots cook in the microwave 
Yeah. Oh, I, re I remember the first microwave my mother got. Yes, it was that it was a big thing. And speaking of VCR, I uh, made me think of an event that for a while, of course, you know, as with most technology, copyright issues start coming up. And so uh, taping things became a big deal. And yes. so um, people started copying VHS tapes. And this was, of course, way back, you know, when you rented them, really. No, before really you, you started buying them, you know, you were going to Blockbuster and places and renting the movie on Friday night. And then, you know, when blank VCR uh, VHS tapes came out, people started, you know, we'll copy the movie over. So then we can watch it 10 times and not pay the rental, you know. Yes. And I, I remember a particular <laughs> night in college because they had come up with, and I don't even remember what movie it was. It was, it could not be dubbed. It could not, you could not copy this tape, you know. So seeing an apartment and there's about seven or eight of us in there and it's one of this, that's impossible. And so for the next six hours, they sat and figured out how to do it. I think it took three VCRs to do, but you basically had to loop because it, there was something in encryption, but basically it was, we had to loop it once or twice. And they did it, and, but it was one of those, oh, no, no, that doesn't make sense. We're gonna figure this out, you know. <laughs> um, which, you know, looking back, okay, I, you know, it was interesting to me, I got bored before it was over with, but uh, okay, they proved they could do it. But that's not what's going on with, with, with people buying into the technology in, in this field. Instead of thinking, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense and I'm gonna prove it. It's yes. like, oh, someone's selling me this. <clears throat> it tells me it will, you know, it'll prove I have a ghost. Okay, yeah. here's your money. And that's what <clears throat> I, I think that, again, I think what what's interesting, okay, so a theme that keeps cropping up for us in tonight's episode that we were not planning specifically was we were planning the, something <laughs> yeah when do we plan anything um the 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 preconceptions that are inured within our psyche mm -hmm. that we don't know our preconceptions true and yeah, on, true. On, on the these a variety of things so my my where my thoughts on the micro which is why i brought it up plus ooh carrots um is that that there's like certainly for me in the 80s and i think many of us grew up with the idea that okay there's this chunk of technology you buy the thing it says it's going to cook your carrots for you you buy the thing you plug it in it cooks the carrots and you don't question it's like no i don't have to think critically about how this works or whether or not it's a good thing or whether or not it's a bad thing or anything i just plug it in and punch the buttons and it does the thing same with the vcr although hooking those up were always a pain but not the, to the clock. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um <clears throat> but i think that that we we oftentimes approach the uh quote unquote ghost hunting tech in the same way this is what it says on the box and it's a it's a chunk of tech, so I'm going to buy it for whatever it costs, and then plug it in or you know stick batteries in it, and off we go. Mm -hmm. And instead of it, saying, "Oh wait a minute, that doesn't make sense," and I'm going to prove it. Um, yes, yes. And, and I, I'm not sure what happened between you know that point, you know, uh, <laughs> that somehow uh, there's a a good segment of the population and and i know people who have who've done this that it's like you're otherwise a very bright person why are you not <laughs> rationally seeing the issue here um yeah and, but a lot of the a lot of the technology is repurposed from something else it was meant right. to cook the carrots but now they're using it to to uh look for goats <laughs> uh, right so so you know, might cook your carrots, but does that mean there's a ghost in the microwave? No. Um, 
<laughs> that you know of. That. I know of that. Okay. <laughs> Might be a carrot ghost. <laughs> but and and that is that that's a big thing that's going on. And some some of the examples are more obvious than uh, some of them are fairly are more subtle that I, I get why people might be fooled um, right if they delve into it and really figure out the technology mm -hmm. um, but some of them are pretty obvious and have certain bugs about them that you know should clue in anyone over 12 you know particularly at this point in time when we are so saturated in technology that someone, you know, if you know, if you're 12 and can, you know, do everything with games and everything that 12 year olds can do, you should be going. Wait a minute, um, yeah. and that's what gets me. Um, and and the bit the big example is the SLS camera, which is the which is the Kinect. Um, and uh which you know is a camera for video gaming systems yes yes and, <clears throat> but it's being basically repackaged as this quote sls camera that detects ghosts with an avatar of a stick person and okay if that's that doesn't the... sound if that doesn't if that's not ludicrous enough once you see it demonstrated you're really going really if that is a ghost then there's something wrong with that ghost because they invariably end up perched on top of someone's head or on the underside of a table or you know um something weird and yes. it's because you aren't because you are assuming because they told you it's a ghost that it's a ghost instead of so you're assuming it's supposed to cook the carrots and it's cooking the carrots but <laughs> it wasn't it was designed to wash your clothes and they're telling you it cooks the carrots you know, <laughs> the issue. And, if, and if you watch the if you wash your carrots enough on pot it might cook them but quite <laughs> inefficiently <laughs> I was wondering what that was called. I had seen that, but I didn't realize what it was. But I, I remember yeah. watching and and going, that is incredibly chimpanzee-like behavior. Um, yeah, and, and 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 what it is, and for anyone listening who wonders, who just watched the shows, and one show in particular um, is fond of it. Um, what it is is that the connect. It worked by using you as an avatar for movement mm -hmm. and then movement on the screen it's all based on reflections and so what they what happened is the day after the same day that the connect came out within 24 hours there were hacks online from 12 year olds you know showing you here's how you can create your own avatar whatever avatar you want, you know. And so what's happened is jump forward, what, 15, 20 years later, and a certain entrepreneur uh, repackaged the, you know, the thing with an avatar of a step person. Yes. Representing a ghost. And <clears throat> I've seen grown people my age, you know, even as old as I am, seeing watching this going, oh my God, it's a ghost, it's a ghost, it's a ghost, it's under the table, it's on top of his head, it's climbing his shoulder. And it's like, no, the camera detected a reflection off of a hard surface and that's where the reflection was. So, um, and if that's a ghost, they've got some more serious problems than being a ghost, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, but 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 you know there's a lot of people who they they just never seem to even question those things mm -hmm. and i think <clears throat> and and it's in that particular regard i, I think that that can be very <laughs> more than less than helpful yeah in in terms of moving the the conversation of credibility forward 
And, and I do think that it's fair if we, if we seriously degrade the questions of credibility, we are also degrading the, the very real experiences that thousands of people have. And, and I think that, I think that, and that is something that I think is almost lost in this whirlwind uh, with, you know, all this visual representation of the shows and so forth is that people are having experiences and someone's experience it's valid what it means may be a variety of things and what ultimately it is may be a variety of things but their experience has validity in itself and if we start invalidating people's experiences their own stories then that is a slippery slope that i don't think society really wants to deal with and it could be whether you know a story of where they saw a ghost or any other experience you know um if you start reducing it all down to um what whether a light flashes or a stick figure is moving you know yes i think <clears throat> that that in and of itself in addition to being trite is uh is very reductivist Mm-hmm. in its in it, in its approach because it's not taking uh the collective the, the the contextual experience and the human experience into into account i think it's very important to understand a real and you know if, if you believe in ghosts and you believe that ghosts are disembodied or dead people uh to put it very bluntly uh if you're if you're you're speaking to someone about a haunting or if, if someone is speaking to you about a haunting uh that they're experiencing there's a, at a minimum there are two human experiences um that are are interacting in a in a meaningful if at times unsettling way the person is talking to you and the dead person in presumably their house or workplace or wherever it is that they're they're interacting with exactly. uh, the the person <clears throat> And it, it reminds me of a conversation I had at one of our recent tours was in talking about, was, you know, talking about the, the residents of the, of the, uh, the location uh-huh. and, the, and, <clears throat> and, and I said that, you know, the, these were loved and important people and this is their home and it's, to me, it's very helpful and very comforting to, to step into the space with respect for them, uh, respect for their home. And lovely person who was on the tour stopped me and said, thank you for calling them people. Mm-hmm. And uh, it honestly, it is it, a, at the time, and then even since then, it's easy to get emotion for me to get emotional uh, about that because we, these are people. Yeah, and, and it's too easy to reduce down to uh, something that's two dimensional. Yes, and and, yes. and then and then commercial, uh, you know, essentially turn it into a, a um, a, an exploitable circus show. When yeah. even even if you even if let's say that we're all completely wrong, we're all completely hallucinating, and there is absolutely no such thing as ghosts. We know nothing about the afterlife let's just you know scrape the slate clean even with that um what you cannot deny is that the the individuals who who came before us were people like us and they had things that they they cared about they had goals they had ambitions they had love they had family they had heartbreak they had sadness and and they created things um in some cases, beautiful homes that we're now saying that they're haunting. Um, and the um, beautiful structures, stories, um, and we're instrumental in getting us to this generation. That means something. It, it does, and um, and it's funny because that is more the view. And I was just thinking, in in some ways, our our approach is a little more retrospective of how things were approached 
before you know this post World War II mentality took over. Yes. Um, and so, and I understand where it got there, wanting proof, wanting that you know can't can you know we want to be able to have something we can hang our hat on. And, yes. But it's getting yes. that human experience as value in and of itself too. And it, it does. It really does. And um, and, and also uh, just the human, our, our, our capacity to, to sense things is, is overlooked because it is, and I think that, I think that part of the obsession with the equipment is to get something that we can feel like is doc, is, is able to document something other than I felt very uneasy in that room, but I don't know why. Right. And that's true. And, and, you know, sort of coming back away from the, the bad side of the spiritualist movement, that there were charlatans, there were um, a lot of, there was fraud that went on. Um, yeah. And, you know, and just the, the fact that in most situations, it's really hard to say, I can put complete trust in someone else's experience. Yes, yes. That's very typical unless you know that person well. It, it is. And that, you know, that you, you, cannot, you cannot separate the, the questions of, for example, the paranormal research or, or an experience without taking into account the living. Exactly. It's... It's part and parcel. Perhaps in close, I, I'm just curious. Um, angry ghosts. Um, have you have you come across an experience in which someone, which you you experienced, or you know that there there was an angry ghost, or that the, for example, the person wanting the investigation or talking to you was under the impression that there was an angry ghost. Um, actually both. I, I've, I've, I've encountered a handful of ghosts that, or, or spirits that seem to be angry or at least exhibited activity that would indicate so. Um, although typically that kind of experience seems to be, you know, that tended to be the person's personality when you started digging into the history and, and so forth that, you know, they, you know, they had a short temper or whatever. Um, yes. uh, you know, there's been a couple that at times kind of come off seeming really grumpy or angry, um, but they were in situations, they often passed in situations that seemed um, either unfair or very tragic or that you could understand why someone was angry in that moment. Um, uh, and then I've seen some situations where, you know, basically investigators just basically poke the bear to the point that they provoke a response, which yeah. can happen to with any, I mean, you push some, anyone too far and you're going to get a response. So um, right. I, some of them, I can't necessarily say that I think it was the ghost that was angry other than just, you know, finally having enough and reacting. Um, yeah. and then I've, then I've also had, you know, some clients that, you know, oh, this, you know, they painted that, you know, basically, you know, you, you think, you know, the way they describe it, you're going to walk in and the paint's peeling off the walls and things that, you know, the China's <laughs> flying across the room and shattering and you really don't experience any of that. Um, and actually, maybe some of the most unsettling um, situations were not ones where you had sort of that angry outburst activity, like poltergeist activity, but just, uh, but actually, some, you know, EVPs that came across very threatening. Yes. <clears throat> um, and those are the ones that are that I find very um, interesting because you know I've had, I, I we have had those where. It's like they were, it was, uh, you know, spoken threats, you know, to either someone, say, live there or a couple, you know, a couple times towards investigators. 
um, and not necessarily knowing, you know, a motive for that or what, yeah. you know, why they evoked that kind of response. And, and I think that, you know, and this is moving more into the, the negative and malevolent haunting, which is not the norm. No. Uh, but the, but also the, the, the simple reality that there are um, people who, for a variety of reasons, do very bad things. We, we have crime statistics to prove that. Uh, and while sometimes uh, that can be very understandable, that you know if you're the victim of that it's less understandable for obvious reasons and that that if an individual who is uh dangerous uh, dangerous malevolent uh capable of harming people in some of these cases particularly you know you see it in 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 uh, civil war history, you see it in the, in the gangster history, we're dealing with individuals who are committing acts of great violence against others, yeah. and then perhaps die in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. And if you're that person in life, it, it's not hard to make the, the logical leap that you're that person in the afterlife as well. That's true. And, and, and I know you've heard it. I often say at public events, you know, if you're a jerk in life, you're usually a jerk in the afterlife. So. Yeah. And I think that that is one of the things that makes it um, particularly unsettling in, in terms of doing research and analysis in or, or, or around specific locations, um, uh, prisons being one of them. Well, yeah, I mean, that prisons and um, a lot of sites of battles and asylums, those, and, and some hot, just regular hospitals, those tend yeah. to be sites that have a lot of that kind of activity. Um, one, because you had, you, you had, violent people there uh you had maybe unstable personalities and not just in a mental health sense but just you know you know psychotic personalities yes. um, and then you had people that very horrible things happened to them in those situations that maybe they weren't they weren't violent necessarily but what happened to them would anger anybody and yes and you put all of that together uh, and then turn out the lights, <laughs> it, it, could be, it could be quite a mix. It, it really can. And so I think, I think that's why those kind of locations often do have a disproportionate level of aggressive behavior and activity. Yes, yes. So, I mean, I think it's, it's important it's important to understand that in in so many everyday cases, there's no reason to freak out. And realistically, even if there is a, a quote unquote negative haunting or malevolent haunting, freaking out is not going to help. No, actually, just feed feeds uh, feeds it usually. Yeah, uh, I, I I do. <laughs> I'm going to conjecture from a, the the reality that. You know, some, something that this is a conjecture, something that, that happens very regularly is that if you bring a lot of high emotion into a, 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 a space with activity, you're going to get uh, a higher likelihood of pushback. Uh, of, very, of, very much so. And, and that often, I think, also correlates to why some of the sort of in, intense activity happens in locations where you have um teenagers uh because they are dealing with high emotional levels and hormones and uh, yeah. and activity tends to feed off of that particularly if it's something that is more tritster like yes um i'm conjecturing a, a further step i think we've occasionally joked about it at times but um actually taking it from a from a somewhat serious point how important it is when, when you go into these spaces, not to frighten the ghosts. 
it, it's 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 very true. I mean, um, it, it's it may seem odd, but your behavior and uh, provocation can create responses and mm -hmm. it can affect you it can affect others and if it's in a private home where people are there or even a business of people are there a lot um it can um mm -hmm. affect them after you go home and that's one thing that i've always told people investigating that you know i'm here tonight you know we may be here a few times but at the end of the day we go home and you know the the client has to deal with living there or working their business or whatever it is and so what we do not only affects us but it affects them too yes so at the end of the day and this is perhaps a good close don't frighten the ghosts they don't like it no um and you wouldn't like it either no <laughs> <laughs> i think that may be a good place to to end for tonight absolutely we appreciate everyone so very much uh, for following Dark Ozarks and uh, attending events and uh, and just helping us uh, continue this 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 work and this research. If you have questions, comments, or things that you would like to share, either publicly or privately, please do not hesitate to contact us. Exactly, and we will be back next Wednesday. Absolutely, night, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Lisa. thank you, Alex. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>